As you may have watched in my previous video, the Panama Papers scandal has shown a light on shell companies and anonymous business entities. Surprisingly though, these practices aren't new at all. The public's main question is if there is so much fraudulent activity conducted by shell companies, why are they allowed in the first place? That's what I'll share with you in this video. Shell companies. The good, the bad, and the ugly. This is Fraud Explained. To enjoy more videos, subscribe to my channel and click the notification bell or else I'll be looking into you too. Just to make it clear, there are legitimate, even good uses for shell corporations. But I bet you're more interested in are the ways the super wealthy use it for less than legal means. Stand till the end to find out the ugly side of these shell companies and the benefits they bring to those who utilize them. Let's start with the basics. A shell corporation is just that, a shell that stores money and engages in financial transactions with no other significant business activity like creating products, hiring employees, or generating revenue. They're also known as international business corporations, personal investment companies, phantom firms, mailbox companies, or letterbox corporations. Their main come on is the offer of anonymity. They hide the identities of their owners and can be set up anonymously, letting businesses and individuals engage in financial dealings without revealing who they are. When it comes to transactions, shell companies have surprising flexibility on behalf of shareholders. Shell companies can open bank and brokerage accounts, shifting funds around inside and outside the company, conduct regular financial transactions, purchase real estate, buy other companies, hold copyrights, and collect royalties. Shell companies can even stage a hostile takeover of another company or hold assets in preparation for creating a new company. Most notably, they can also hide the identity of shareholders, executives, and others linked to the shell company to avoid regulators and tax officials and also evade the shadier characters like criminals and fraudsters who may wish to steal assets and threaten their safety. You can consider using a shell corporation for your business to grow its operations while lightening the tax burden. By operating in a country with low tax rates, a business can reach new markets and increase profits. Even if you don't plan to operate in a foreign country, you may want to set up a shell company to invest in foreign markets like stock and securities exchanges. For many, tax avoidance is the biggest come on since shell companies can be used to avoid paying taxes to the federal and state government. It's technically legal because the assets held in the shell company are supposedly earned abroad and can't be taxed by outside countries. With that, you're also safe from local and volatile economic conditions. Take Greece for example, which a decade ago was sieged by public riots in the streets over national economic belt tightening and inflation, so much so that the national deficit skyrocketed. A more recent example is Venezuela's crashing economy in the late 2010s that caused mass starvation and shuttering businesses. In these scenarios, an offshore shell company would protect your capital and insulate your company from the toxicity of the economic climate causing havoc on the assets of other companies. Not only that, your assets are also protected from lawsuits because a shell company in a country that doesn't enforce US legal rulings cannot be touched and its funds cannot be seized. Take note, this practice is only legal if all required US taxes are paid. These are good uses for them. What about the bad ones? Stay tuned and you'll find out. There are many ways to create a shell company. For example, anonymous shareholders of a company can buy enough shares of a shell company to take full control of it, and ultimately merge it with a private company. The resulting publicly traded entity is referred to as a shell company, since there's almost nothing there except for the shell. In the new company, shareholders hold the controlling majority of the public company's shares, and with that, the control of the newly merged company and its board of directors. Another way is for registered agents to file paperwork and send fees to the company register on a business's behalf. This is easily done online or via phone for a fee ranging from a couple hundred to a few thousand dollars. Easy and cheap. 
Usually shell corporations are found in tax havens, countries or territories with few or no taxes on business, as well as stringent laws against revealing banking information. These tax havens are usually found in popular tax-advantaged offshore paradises like Panama, the Cayman Islands, or Switzerland. An estimated 60% of the money in Swiss bank accounts belong to shell corporations. In the US, Delaware, Nevada, and Wyoming are the most popular states for creating a shell company because of the law and corporation requirements and strict privacy laws. According to the research group, Global Financial Integrity, the U.S. is the second easiest country to create a shell corporation in. With a U.S. shell company, foreigners can access the U.S. real estate market. As a matter of fact, a large amount of real estate in major U.S. cities are owned by shell corporations. Wherever it is, a shell corporation must register with the company register of the country it's created in. U.S. shell companies register with the U.S. Securities and Exchange Commission. You might be surprised, or not so surprised, to know that registering a shell corporation requires little personal information. It usually only needs the identities of the registered agent and the beneficial owner. With this, a company can easily mask ownership by hiring people, known as nominee directors, to file the paperwork under their name. On top of that, a shell corporation can even register as a subsidiary of another shell corporation surrendering its ownership fully to that other shell corporation. This process can be repeated many times to create layers and layers of multi-level secrecy. This gets more complicated when each subsidiary shell is in a different country, protecting the owner from investigation by any one country. Before you go running off to Panama or Delaware, you have to know that shell companies are not all upsides. There are distinct risks involved in running a shell company. Firstly, they are generally frowned upon as a dark side of business, especially with the recent controversy of the Panama Papers. This means that to the general public, shell companies can generate a public relations problem. A shell company can be hostage to financial losses in the stock market when shareholders and customers get wind of its less than desirable transactions, like stealing jobs away from a major national brand or stalling growth with the questionable movement of money abroad. Investors and shareholders are likewise turned off when a company takes profits outside the country and stores them in a shell company instead of using the money for researching new products or hiring new employees, thereby boosting local economy. These moves are seen as self-indulgent and not helping the company grow and generate more profits. Worse still is when the shell company draws the ire of the IRS, or federal regulators. They may be subjected to investigation, or worse, litigation, giving underlying corporation and the true beneficial owner a headache and maybe even a regulatory black eye. If a company can't prove that its shell company is legitimate, bad publicity will be the least of its problems. As you might have noted already, the anonymity offered by shell companies is like catnip to criminal enterprises who thrive in the shell company's gray areas. Even Masek Fonseca, the notorious star of the Panama Papers, made a statement regarding their documents, saying that they've done nothing illegal and their offering of quick and easy shell companies were very much in keeping with the global reputation they've built over the past 40 years of doing business the right way. Yes, while shell companies arguably pass the legal smell test, they can still be used for criminal purposes, which in turn may catch the eyes of law enforcement. The most common illegal use of shell companies is for evading taxes. The super wealthy may hide money in shell corporation to shield it from taxation. In fact, some of the notable names in the Panama Papers were Madonna, Shakira, and even the Queen of England. Check out my other video, The Panama Papers, to see some of the other shocking names on the list. Aside from tax evasion, shell companies have been known to launder dirty money from illegal activities by deceptively hiding the true nefarious sources of the money. Some have also been used to engage in illegal business ventures, like the sales of narcotics, hiding money earned from illegal arms sales, or even involvement of large-scale sex trafficking. More relatable to some, shell companies have been used for hiding assets from a spouse in a divorce, which is a type of fraud. 
Many of you think that tax evasion and tax avoidance are nowhere near and only happen in far off places with coconut trees and white sand beaches. Unfortunately, the reality is it's also a big deal here in the US. The US Treasury estimates that around $300 billion a year is laundered through the United States. Through shell companies, foreigners are coming in and buying up property. Some perfectly legitimate, but some are clearly money laundering corrupt officials and other people parking their cash in property. All these make it impossible for regular folks like us to afford real estate. Bottom line, there's no question that shell companies are illegal. But in the court of the public eye, that hardly makes them good. Even so, shell companies can play a pivotal role in the management and control of assets, storage, and cash flow, all safe from intrusive and prying eyes. This is seen as a big positive in business, where operating in secrecy means more freedom to grow. That's why business entities often resort to shell companies. What about you? Do you think shell companies should be stopped altogether, or is there some good in them? Let everyone know your thoughts in the comments down below, and I will be responding to all comments in the first hour. You might think that it's just better to avoid shell companies in favor of safer means of saving money, like with the bank. Then you should watch my other video, How Banks Make Money, to find out how your money actually helps a bank make so much more money. Stay tuned, and stay educated.